I wanted to make a couple of additions to the computer cabinet at the end of the CNC. One, one thing I wa really wanted to do is to make some things that hang off of the French cleat. So I'm gonna do that. The other thing I did, which now seems really obvious, so someone commented that I should just get a wireless keyboard and mouse for the computer tray, so I don't have the wires to deal with when the drawer goes in and out. So I, I did that, which is much nicer. There's no wires now, and the, the little notch I made is kind of useless now. <laughs> and I also got a floor mat that I can stand on, which someone suggested, which makes it much nicer standing on the, on the concrete. The first thing I wanted to make was a place to hold the wrenches for the spindle. So I cut some cleats out of the same pine that I've made the cabinet out of. I did that by cutting a strip, then cutting that strip in half with a 45 degree angle, and that gave me two cleats. Then I could work on the part to hold the wrenches. Since the wrenches are fairly flat, I thought I could use something like a knife holder where I sandwich two pieces of wood together and cut out a space for the handle on the wrench. And the wrench would then fit into that space once the two pieces are put together. So I cut out the space for the handles out of one side. Then I cut that piece down to the size that I wanted it at. I left it big as I was cutting the the pockets out on the CNC as it gave me a place to hold the piece of wood on the CNC table. So you can see how the wrenches are going to fit into the sandwiched pieces of pine. Then I can glue the two pieces together. I kept the glue away from the pockets a little bit as I couldn't get at the inside of the pockets to wipe away any glue squeeze out. And I cut a piece of cleat to the right length and attach that. Then once the glue had dried, I could just sand all of the sides flush and knock down the corners. So you can see how that fits on the French cleat and how the wrenches go in. And there it is. <laughs> I wanted to add some cleats to the back of the cabinet. These do add a little bit of depth over the CNC table, but they shouldn't be in the way. They give me a larger area where I can hang things on the cleat system. I wanted to make a place to put the Z-axis plate and the panic button. So I made cutouts for those in a piece of pine. then I can cut that piece of pine down to the size that it needs to be. I cut out a slot for the wiring on both the panic button and the Z-axis plate. And I wish now I had put that on both sides of the pocket as it makes these sort of directional having it on only one side. As I had the saw blade still set up at 45 degrees, from cutting the French cleat, I made a bracket to hold the piece with the pocket cut out that would help hold the platform away from the cabinet. So I would have enough depth or enough cantilever away from the cabinet for the Z-axis plate and the panic button. And that seemed to work pretty well. And I can add a cleat to the back of that. And these don't have to carry a huge amount of weight, so I don't really think I need screws. Just glue and some finished nails. And I can sand these, get everything flush. With a 45 degree angle, I had some bits that were sort of sticking out, and I got all those flush. So you can see how these work and the different things fit into their cubbies or their cutouts. And now they're in a very reachable location.
at the other end of the CNC, where the fourth axis is, I've been keeping my cart. Where I've had it, it's kind of hard to get in and out. And I've wanted to move it to the front, or sort of the, the end of the CNC frame. The other thing I wanted to do at this end of the CNC frame was to add beefier angled brackets. As the fourth axis kind of shakes a little bit when it's being run. And it would be nice if the frame provided a little more support at this end of the machine. So I took off the brackets that were there and I wanted to move up the bottom strut on the frame so that I could put my cart under the strut. And put my cart on the end of the CNC. I figured out I could actually use the cart to hold that strut in place while I put it at the new location. I can cut my aluminum pieces these are the same leftover pieces from the pool cover that I salvaged when we built the shop. And I've used these on the other parts of the CNC, but I wanted to add two more at the end. So I cut a 45 degree angle and I marked and then drilled holes for bolts. I started the first hole and it was going really slowly and I thought maybe the bit was dull. But after looking at the bit, it wasn't really cutting in the center. So what I did is I would drill out a smaller hole in the center, and that went really quickly. Then I could use my bit that's the size that I want for the hole, that isn't drilling in the center very well, <laughs> and drill the smaller hole bigger. And this worked really well. And then the, the big bit went through the aluminum really quickly. As it wasn't dull, it just wasn't cutting in the center. Then once the holes are done, I can ream out the edges really quickly. This isn't super important, but it makes the holes a little nicer. And I can put the new diagonal bracing in place. So there are little sort of bracket bolts that fit into the slots on the aluminum. And those sort of make a nut that fits within the extruded aluminum and I can bolt to those and make a very strong connection. So the bolt goes through the hole that I drilled into the nut that's within the CNC frame. So this should be much more rigid as I'm getting a lot more length out of these braces. So I got the braces in place and I have this little space here that I want to make a really simple cabinet to hold a few things. I've got, I've got a whole bunch of these little chuck interface pieces and it'd be nice to keep these right here next to the chuck so they're always sort of in the, in the same place. And the, the chuck key for the fourth axis chuck that I cannot lose <laughs> and it needs to always be in the right place when I need it. So it'd be nice if it was right here. So I've been wondering what kind of little cabinet to make. It'll, it'll sort of be a box. And at first I was thinking, you know, maybe I, I make something as deep as the end of the CNC, but that seemed way bigger than I really needed. And it made the axis to the fourth axis kind of far away because there'd be this big thing in the way. I wondered about making you know, something thinner and then putting a door on it that would flip up, it goes up and sort of make sort of a flat table space here. But I could see where that would just be, it would just get covered with a lot of junk clutter. <laughs> and it would also just be in the way of getting to the fourth axis. It goes down. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is make something that's only the thickness of the leg on the CNC. So it's just going to be a little sort of three inch wide sort of tall cabinet and it'll just hold these these little things that I have that need to go at this this end of the CNC machine. So I got some more pine ready to make the cabinet. With these pieces they were mostly straight <laughs> but they did have a little bit of 
cupping and bending. So I cut them down to fairly close to the sizes I was going to need before I started to joint and plane them. And this way I wouldn't lose as much material trying to get rid of those bends and cups. And then I could cut the pieces to their final sizes. And I cut a rabbit at the end of the long pieces for the corners. And I cut the short pieces. I made sure my pieces fit in the space as they were going to be boxed in all the way around. So it couldn't be too big. <laughs> and I made sure the cart still worked. I wanted to make a shelf along the center of the piece, so I cut dados on the short end pieces roughly in the center. Then I could have a third long piece as a shelf in the middle. This long piece will be supported by the back, but I still wanted to make some supports in the middle. So I cut dados in the center of the long shelf and roughly in the center of the top and bottom. Those will then provide spaces for the vertical supports. I've cut all the pieces out except for the back. And to attach the back, I want to have it flush with the back of these pieces. So I need to cut a rabbit into the outside pieces and cut the inner pieces a little thinner so that they'll take up that thickness of the back. I also need to drill a few holes so I can attach this to the CNC frame. I'm thinking I'll do those just on the sides to keep it from tipping out. And the, the bottom piece on the CNC will hold, just hold it up. It doesn't really need a, a screw on the bottom. I found a piece of quarter inch MDF that I had, which I can use for the back. So I cut that down to size. It was just long enough. Then I can put the piece together. I had it fit together to make sure everything fit, a dry fit, as you will. <laughs> then I could glue and finish nail everything together. And I put the back on. I marked where the center pieces were as I couldn't see them once the back was in place. And then I could put nails through the back into those pieces that are in the middle of the cabinet. I realized at this point that I didn't need to set the back into the cabinet. It could have just sat on the outside of the back as the cabinet's completely framed by the aluminum of the CNC frame. You wouldn't see the edge of the back if it was just on the back of the frame, but it was a nice way to do it. <laughs> and I can find all the things that I want to put in this cabinet. The chuck key for the fourth axis is always just kind of floated around this area and it's never really had a good home. So this is much, much nicer. And I can put the cart back and everything's a little bit less cluttered now, which is good. Thanks for watching.